Hello, ho, ho, all you beautiful people. Welcome to episode number 516 of the Riverfront Red Show, the Frankie Montas Emergency Edition. Joe Farsing is with me today. Joe, could this be real? Is this the announcement you were hoping for? And also, how are you? I am. First off, I'm fantastic. I had fantastic holidays. I hope you and yours had a fantastic holiday as well. Um, and this was everything I dreamt it could be. Frankie Montas is a Cincinnati Red. No, it's, it's I, I didn't expect this. Um, I was behind. We were out run, running around with the kids when I popped on social media and saw this. And after a lot of weird, conflicted thoughts by everybody on social mm -hmm. media, because everyone has an angry, very strong opinion one way or the other, I'm like, eh, I like this move. It's, it, it's not, yeah. this isn't winning them the pennant, but it's also not taking them to last place, battling for uh, to stay out of 100 losses again. Yeah, that's right. So um, some details on the signing. He uh, is a one-year, $16 million deal. Frankie Montas, represented by the notorious Boris of Scott Boris fame. A couple of Boris clients the Reds have signed this offseason. Um, I guess a reason a lot of people are going to pan this move is because Frankie Montas missed virtually all of last season. I think he made one appearance for the Yankees um, after, was it shoulder surgery? Shoulder surgery in February. Yeah, so... You know, this, this is a high-risk move. This is not a giant needle mover. But my initial reaction, Joe, is pretty simple. The Reds got better again. They signed a dude who, if everything goes right, slots into the top half of that rotation. Um, If they're not in contention and he's pitching well, they can move him at the deadline. Um, If they don't and he's pitching well, they could submit a qualifying offer which he would likely decline, and they would get a compensatory draft pick because of it. The only risk I see with this move is with Bob Castellini's checkbook. And I don't care about Bob Castellini's checkbook. They can spend all of his money as long as they're spending some. Um, so that that was that's where I am just off the bat. How about you? Yeah, it's... The Reds have made four acquisitions, and none of them are game-changing, like Yoshinobu Yamamoto or Shohei Otani or Tyler Glass. Now, or all any you know anyone that the Dodgers have brought in, they've all four raised the level. This was an eighty-two and eighty team, and yeah, you can point to things like their Pythagorean record. They out they overperformed um, outside of the twelve-game winning streak. That you know they were mm -hmm. they were what they were, but these are four guys that are better than what ha they ha what preceded them. So. This is, I mean, these are positives in my book. My only question is, does this preclude them from going and getting someone who's more of a, I don't want to say legit ace, but um, someone who, who's a more reliable arm? Because it's, mm -hmm. say what you want. I mean, he, he has a decent uh, resume behind him. He threw four innings last year, three of which were in AAA coming back from shoulder surgery. I would assume that the Reds had every single doctor at their disposal. Uh, Dr. Scholl, Dr. Uh, Pepper, uh, look at his physicals and everything, but um, he only threw four innings last year coming off a of shoulder surgery. I mean, his fastball his uh, fastball velocity was right about where, where it should be. 90, let's see, 94.8 miles an hour on three-hole four-seamers, but that's pretty much right in line with where it was. It was 96 in 2022, so... At least yeah. he's throwing it as hard as usual. And that's not his big out pitch. His big out pitch is that splitter. No. He has no. an absolutely nasty splitter. So uh, him and Fernando Cruz are going to be sharing tips on that all season long. Um, that's the big question. The reason that a lot of people seem to uh, be sort of opposed to this move is that he's not that guy. He's not that ace. Um, I'm not going to say he doesn't have potential to be there. I wouldn't expect it. Um, he's only shown it once before. It's back in 2000 and. 21 when he got six Cy Young votes. And he was, uh, let's get into some of those stats real quick. Um, we mentioned he missed almost all of last year, 1.1 innings pitched. 2022, he had a really good year. He ended up with a 116 ERA plus and was a major, major trade deadline acquisition by the New York Yankees. Um, now, let's be fair. Things did not go well for him in New York as things 
often do for a lot of players, it seems. But before that in Oakland, he was pretty fantastic. That came on the heels of a 2021 season that we just mentioned where he finished with a 122 uh, for some of the count numbers, a 337 ERA, 187 innings pitched. Uh, that FIP was 337, so no luck involved at all. He was just good. And my favorite stat, his whip was 1.182. You get that, keep that below 1.2, and you're having a pretty good year. Yeah. That's the guy that the Reds hope they're getting for $16 million. It is equally likely that they get that guy that pitched for the for the Yankees in the second half of 2022. They could get the guy that pitched in um, 2020, who was bad. But that was a weird year. We're not blaming anybody for that. Yeah. 2019, he was excellent. 2018, he was okay. So I, I, it's 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 a no risk move. And for me, more than anything else, it provides serious serious depth. Last season, the Cincinnati Reds went into opening day with three major league caliber starters on their roster or in that rotation, and now they have what seven. Plus, Connor Phillips and Rhett Lauder waiting in the wings. Um, yeah. It seems to me like Nick Crawl has casually and sort of sneakily put together a super deep roster, and that counts the uh, position players and the bullpen. Super flexible, and maybe the deepest starting rotation, dare I say it, in the NL Central. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, depth is the key word. Um, they have, between all, you know, yes, probably legitimate seven starting pitchers, which is fantastic. I, whatever you're going to do with Lodolo, I don't know if they're convinced that he's going to be ready to go from the jump. Um, unfortunately, you can't count on him until he's actually thrown a consistent amount of innings. But very good. You point. have that that guy or Brandon Williamson or possibly Graham Ashcraft. I don't know. Those guys either in the pen or in Louisville, ready to take innings when you need pitchers. Because you're going to need. I mean, this isn't going to be 2012 when the Reds used five starters for all but one start and for a back end of a doubleheader. Um, Having those extra guys, they're all good for what two, three plus war over 162 innings, if not higher, or over 162 games, if not higher. The roster itself, they've got so many guys that can fit anywhere, mix and match. They're a very deep team, and I think their floor is really high. It's funny because they have put on social media, Fangraphs updated their projections, and the Reds are still only projected with the 25th most amount of wins, which I think is ludicrous. And I, and I don't say this as a homer. Um, they severely discount uh, and, uh, any stats, any projections or anything like that for rookies and young players. Yeah. If they play, if they played well, they uh, throttle those expectations well down and they don't give them much uh, advancement. But I, I, I think unless literal crap hits the fan and 10 guys go on the IR or IL, IL whatever um, at the same time. Yeah. Um, th this team has a 500 floor with, you know, which is better than what we can say for the last handful of years. I still think there, there's still some places where they need to improve, but they're, they're solid everywhere. There, there, there's no gigantic hole. Like, Oh, well, they, you know, they've got, Luis Sesa and uh, Connor Overton in the starting rotation. Those guys are gone. Luke Weaver. The, the, the amount of starts. 21 they starts of Luke Weaver. To garbage dudes last season. And this season, those starts can go to Brandon Williamson and Graham Ashcraft and a healthy Dick Lodolo and Nick yep. Martinez. These are professional yep. major league pitchers that are going to be getting the, uh, the 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 four or five men in the rotation starts. And Frankie Montas, his, his ceiling is higher than that. But let's talk about how this could go wrong or why somebody might not like it. Um, for me, the big one is it's still not that ace guy. Everybody, yeah. every Reds fan wants a top two spot in the rotation arm. Well, there aren't that many of those guys out there. Um, the ones that are out there, only a couple of them are off the market right now. And the Reds are probably never going to be players for those guys anyway. And there's still time. There's no indication that the Reds are done making moves. I don't feel the need to um, anticipate that they are done making moves until that's been proven. And they still have maintained every single one of these heralded prospects if they want to go out and make a trade for somebody. So is Frankie Montas that needle mover that gets the Reds closer to a World Series? Not much. A little bit. Not much. 
but let's just wait and see. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think, and I'm pretty sure it's the Reds who leaked what the uh, White Sox were uh, were asking for with um, Dylan Cease with five prospects, and they named four of them. Um, part of me worries that they heard that and they just panicked and freaked and said, we're not, you know, that's too rich. And yeah, I, I admit like, that, that they asked for a ton, and that's why you negotiate, but... Well, also, let's, let's, be, let's be fair to Nick Craw here, which, you know, I don't enjoy doing. The, the reported <laughs> packages for Dylan Cease and Shane Bieber and Emmanuel Classe are super high. No other team yeah. has, has has ponied up. Yeah. So it's not like the Reds just said no and walked away or they had an opportunity that they passed up. Nobody else has done it either. Yeah, exactly. It, it's not. It, it, that's why everyone was absolutely just losing their minds that the Reds had only added Nick Martinez to the starting rotation. I'm like, there are still so many pieces on the board. Only a handful of guys – the impact players have gone off the board. It, it's everyone's talking about how boring and slow the off season's been because nobody's signing. There's still plenty of guys out there. Reds still have money if they want to go out there and drop however much on uh, Stroman, who I don't, I don't even know how much of an upgrade Stroman is over Montas. I, I, I like Stroman, but he's not an ace guy. Um, Blake Snell, who I think would be disastrous here in Cincinnati with as many walks as he has. Um, but I mean, there are still, top level pitchers out there that if, if they wanted to, they can go get that. Like, it's not like they're off the board and they waited. And then, well, this is table scraps. This is Mike minor because we cut too much payroll and we need to spend it on somebody. Yeah. They went out and they, they, they signed a guy who made the team better. He was exactly what the team needed all last year. And now they've got him and worth noting, they signed him to a one year deal. So yeah. they're maintaining that year over year flexibility um, around this really, really talented young core. Now, there is a strong argument and one that I have no problem uh, supporting in a lot of ways that they should go out and hire, hire, assign a guy to a to a longer term deal. But I wouldn't want them to do that with the Frankie Montas. No. I would be okay with them doing that with a Stroman, sure, a Dylan C type, a Luis Castillo type, if you will. But this deal in a vacuum is just pretty solid piece of business. I mean. The guy's got a career ground ball percentage of 43.7%, which if he does that this year, would put him in the uh, top 20 in all of MLB. So that's going to play well at Great American Ballpark. And I don't know, man. Um, everybody also wants that big 200 innings a year guy. Those guys don't really exist anymore. There are only five no. in all of Major League Baseball last season. So I think it's about <laughs> – it's it, these things are nuanced. It doesn't have to be only good or only bad. It can be potentially good, potentially meh, or it could end up poorly. And if it goes poorly, the only thing we hurt is Bob Castellini's checkbook. Um, I kind of, I kind of like the strategy with the extra wild card spot, Joe. Win the war of attrition. You've got 162 games. You can still make a splashy move at the deadline next year. Just hover around 500 or a little bit above. Do something at the deadline. Now, sure, fair argument could be, well, they didn't do anything at the deadline last year. Well, I'm not going to get mad about what they don't do in 2024 yet. I got plenty of time for that. Um, so I I don't know if I'm beating a dead horse here, but I just think this was a very, very solid move that makes the Reds better, makes them super deep. And I want to dive into, um, and I think we can do this in later pods, start ranking the position groups in the NL Central. And I want to see where this rotation, as currently constructed, stacks up against the other teams in the division. I think you're on mute there, Bubba. Joe, I've lost your audio. That's all right. Joe's going to join us back here in a minute. Um, some other notes, I guess. The roster still needs some guys. There are still some holes that badly need addressing. We need that right-handed outfield bat. Um, they still do. I won't say they need. They could really, really, really use a top of the rotation guy. And let's give Joe one more try here. Any better? Yeah. Hey, there we go. I'd Welcome back, Joe. Don't you love technology? <laughs> I don't even know where, where I was when I cut out and went bye-bye. Anybody that stayed with us through that, real troopers, the real MVPs. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, well, I mean, so what the Reds have done with uh, signing Montas at 16 and signing Nick Martinez at 16, you were getting, and, and we'll 
you you can't assume health, but we'll say what 140 innings per 150 innings per. Sure. So 300 some odd yeah. innings, 250 300 innings at 32 million dollars. Um, Blake Snell is probably going to run about 30. I don't know what the projections are, but probably about thirty million dollars or so. Sure. Um, and you're going to get 150 innings of him, maybe 170 innings of him. And I think the two of those combined are going to give you better bang for your buck. Now that's one, you know, one starting position spot that you know they could fill with someone who's you know a, giving you a couple more war. But it, it makes sense, and, and I think that they're. I don't want to say economical. This makes it sound like it's dumpster diving, but I, I think they're economically smart moves. I would still like them to go out and say heck with it all and spend on a big stud. And if he flames out, he flames out. But as of now, I'm cool with the swings that they've taken. Yeah, that's that, that's what I was saying before you hop back on. Okay. These they there are still a couple holes in this roster. They need that right-handed outfield bat. Um, they they need a top of the rotation guy in the playoffs. I'll throw that caveat out there. They might not need that a roster, a starting rotation of five number five starter or number three starters gets them to the playoffs. Probably wins in the division. It's a week in El Central, so I I just like this move. I think that there's a chance that Frankie Montas is the best pitcher, the most valuable pitcher in the rotation next year. I don't think that's crazy. I hope it's not the case. I hope Hunter Green or Nick Lodolo, Graham Ashcraft, Andrew Abbott, one of these guys, takes a leap and becomes that guy. But if they do, then it makes an addition of Frankie Montas at $60 million a year as your number three or four starter look even better. Yeah. So that's pretty much all my thoughts without us just breaking down stats and rankings. So, Joe, you want to um, give us any parting I would say one here? quick note. He was actually involved – with the Jose Peraza, Scott Shebler, Brandon Dixon deal, when the Reds sent uh, Todd Frazier to the White Sox, White Sox, or he went from the Red Sox organization to the White Sox, and the Dodgers, yeah, that's when Dodgers sent Brandon Dixon, Jose Peraza, and uh, Scotty Shebler, uh, Shebler to the Reds. So, all right, the Reds finally uh, won the Todd Frazier train. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's go. I love it. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I guess that's a good place to call it to quits. We will have more thoughts on this on the regular show next week. Um, thank you for anybody who checks this out. It was, uh, you know, we've been calling for a, a good starter all season, all off season. We finally got something, so we had to make make a quick appearance. We hope this is not the last emergency pod of the off season. There's still plenty of room, but I challenge you, Reds fans. In the meantime. Just kind of be happy with this. Let's let's see where it goes. The Reds signed a pretty good pitcher for a reasonable sum of money, and they got a little bit better today. Uh, so thank you to everyone, as always, and we'll catch you soon. Appreciate you, Joe. Thanks, brother.